Good morning, folks. Uh, heading out to the rail town. I believe that the snow should have melted down enough now to where I can get out there and maybe metal detect a couple of south facing slopes and uh, even probe for bottles. And uh, we shall see what we find. Uh, it is a balmy 22 degrees right now. Fear not, it's supposed to get up into, uh, well, Salt Lake is supposed to get to 55, so it'll probably get to about 45, 50 here, which means, you know, that's flip-flops and Hawaiian shirt weather out here. So, we'll see what we do, how we do, and uh, I appreciate you coming along. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, I've been at it, oh, I don't know, about <clears throat> half an hour. Um, <clears throat> been digging this slope. Got a couple of ends of uh, railroad uh, spikes. I got half of a uh, uh, axe head, axe blade. And it's actually one of those ones used for squaring off logs because you can see how straight it is this side and it's bowing out that side. So that's kind of cool. Uh, a piece of mystery brass, mystery lead, buckle, uh, iron nail. This nail was in the same hole as this piece of copper tubing. And you can see it hasn't even oxidized. That's how well it was in the dirt. So I suspect, I don't know. Uh, based off where I'm at, it might be a pipe to smoke an opium cigarette from the Chinese. I don't know. It's awfully clean to me. Then again, it could be an arrow shaft. Though I haven't found any other pieces in this area. Anyway, that's what we've got so far. Let's keep looking. Right, I'm still in the area where I found those other things. <coughs> um, and I just want to show you this signal. It's the best signal I've had since I've been out here. I've been out about an hour. So we're going to see what it is. I guess you'd call this a live dig. It's still in the it's in the plug, so let's look and see, shall we? It's probably trash, but uh, yeah, that's right. Piece of a uh, flat iron, thin tin like. Which there's plenty of this up here too, but that was a good signal. I had to dig it. Sounded good too, so, oh well. Let's keep digging. All right, this is one of the reasons why I came back to this area. This is the area where I found the uh, ginger, bo ginger beer bottle, my um, Worcestershire sauce bottle, and the Chinese vegetable bowl. I just pulled out the bone. I just pulled out another part of a bottle that's broken. Very cool. But the reason I came back here, as the bottle drops back into the hole, was to get this, to rescue this stuff, which I left over the winter. And you can see that's leather. That's part of a shoe and a boot. And there's uh, yeah, quite a few of them in here. Like two or three that I left in the ground over the winter. So I'm gonna rescue these now. There's ash. Gonna rescue these and uh, set about preserving them. This piece of glass too. I should be wearing my gloves. All right, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye. Okay, well I ended up digging out two more. I didn't know about. They're right underneath the lip here. So I've got one, two. That might be two, three. I mean they're just all falling apart, but you know they're all shoes. Very thin. I mean, it could be slippers. That one's going to eyelet it on it right there. So I'm going to throw them all in a bag and then I'm going to soak them in water, remove all the roots and stuff like that. And then I'm going to soak them in rubbing alcohol. And then the final thing I think is to soak them in, um, 
soak them in uh, like a hot wax or something to preserve them so anyway that's very cool all right see you in a little bit bye well, I just uh, dug this up it's in two pieces it's the top of an opium tin you can just make out the Chinese writing right there hopefully anyway um, sparse snow I mean the ground soft underneath the first inch of about hard uh, frozen soil and this thing was about eight to nine inches down using the uh, my trusty G2 with the DD coil it's good for getting in between the iron and stuff like that so anyway, hey that's good I'm happy with that it's my first bona fide Chinese thing today so let's keep looking talk to you in a little bit bye all right I'm walking back to my bucket it's got some bottles of water in it but I'm also walking back because I just found my second meat cleaver from this area so this was with my fingers tapping right now would have been the sharp blood part right here's where the handle would have been and you can see how it's flattened from where they were probably hammering it down hammering down on it to cut through meat bone joints stuff like that so that's cool I'm happy with that that's my second meat cleaver and I'm probably going to attribute that to being Chinese because it's in the area where I found a lot of Chinese stuff so very cool I will keep uh, looking but that's probably the best piece of iron I found today I'm happy with that all right on to the next one all right I uh, just took another piece of iron and I'm glad I did it's got writing on it and a date it looks like so I don't know what it says yet but uh, as soon as I get it cleaned up I'll let you know but that is coming home with me CP oh please don't tell me that says CPR oh, oh, oh. oh don't know it's got a date on it though alright see you in a little bit bye well just dug another pill. Oh, hi, mouse. Little mouse. I just dug another piece of iron, complete with handle. I have never dug one that's complete. That is just astounding. As some of my friends back in my home country will say, "Brilliant." So that is just that's awesome. Hopefully it's got a maker's name on it somewhere, but that's just awesome. Of course, I heated these up on the uh, top of the stoves. Then, so could this be evidence of Chinese laundry? I don't know, because this is the area I'm in right now. It's a Chinese area, so I'm stoked. That's just amazing. Just amazing. All right. Let's keep digging. All right. Well, I'm sure you can see it. That looks like a piece of 60 pound to the yard rail. It looks like it's got sloughing on it. Oh, this can only mean one thing. That is probably Transcontinental Railroad. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, they are doing a 150th anniversary thing, I guess, out there at the Golden Spike. It's about 12, 13, 14, 15 months from now, 2019 will be the 150th anniversary. Now, what would make this piece even better is if it's got writing on it. And uh, we'll find out soon enough when I get it out. I can tell you right now, folks, it's heavy. It's moving but it's heavy. I'll get back with you in a second. All right, bye. There's your 60 pounds a yard. And that's about a yard and six inches. That's about 
70 pounds worth, I think. Oh, man. Well, I knew I'd find, I had that one small piece I found. I knew I'd find more. Now the question is, does it have any writing on it? Any of the markings? And that right now, I can't tell you. I gotta let it dry out a little bit. Let some of this rust flake off. And then go from there. Well, this is one heavy son of a gun. And I'm gonna have to drag it back to my truck, which is about 300 yards away. I'll do it at the end of the hunt. I'm gonna take this up to where all the other iron's at right now. Leave it there and then figure out what the heck I'm gonna do. But there you go, folks. That's uh, 60 pounds to the yard. That's probably most likely Transcontinental Railroad right there. We're looking at a piece of history, even if it is iron. Awesome, and I'm not even an iron guy or a railroad guy, but it sure is exciting digging this stuff, as you can well imagine. So, okay, see you in a little bit once I've taken a break. Okay. Oh, there's the hole. So you can see, had to dig along it, finally pried up. So I'm gonna fill that in, take this up, and then uh, keep uh, hitting this area. See what else is out here. Talk to you in a little bit. Bye. All right, I'm done. Um, it's 1.30 and in all honesty, the last hour has been spent lugging this stuff back to the truck. The truck's about 200 yards from where I was at. Oh, maybe 300 yards. 300 yards, it might as well have been 300 miles. Anyway, uh, quick round, quick round up then. There's some of the leather shoes, the rest of them are in that bag. I don't want to break them all out because they are kind of fragile. This is the most complete one though. See, it's got a rivet right there, a lace thing. Uh, part of a bottle. Hopefully I can find the rest of that and I can build it as we go along. Uh, some mystery metals. These are actually the most ornate things I've found. I've got no clue what they are. That's just a little disc. It's not a cog or anything. No clue. Uh, a couple of buckles, mystery metals, mystery metals, uh, opium tin lid, glass, uh, I'm assuming that's a cow bone, uh, a couple of pieces around, I don't know why I kept that piece in the bucket, Keep, kept this one because it looks like it's been converted into a chisel, but this is the rod, this is the same size bar that would have gone through the uh, railroad. You know, with the uh, rivet on the end. Uh, this is actually part of a chisel. It's hexagonal. But it's snapped. This is our mystery knife type thing. It's our uh, meat cleaver. I found uh, four complete spikes. Uh, there's that uh, shaving edging axe blade you can see it's straight on the right hand side and it curves out on the left hand side there let me turn around so you can see so that would have been for making uh, square pieces of wood out of logs and then uh, my complete iron my first one ever in fact I just spoke to a buddy of mine out there in the Utah territory and he actually found one of the 1870s uh, cavalry camp complete too so they are out there you don't see that often. Uh, highlights though, have got to be the, uh, now hopefully you can see it, the, see, that piece of uh, railroad iron, that's got to be three and a half, four feet in length. And at 60 pounds to the yard, I'll let you do the math. It's just same, I could tell I was carrying it. But really the highlight, it's got to be this, and I'll clean it up. But it looks like it says CPRR Company or CO and then SAC for Sacramento dot CAL for California and then uh, the date I don't know that's either a three or a five but hopefully it's 1865 if it is that's going to be absolutely probably my best iron find to date. And I generally don't dig iron, uh, he says, looking over this stuff. Anyway, um, glad you came along. I will post some photographs and uh, we will uh, 
and see what that says hopefully and I'll start throwing these I'm gonna go uh, to the local thrift store and get a, a Tupperware container and I'm gonna be soaking these in water for quite a while to get all this stuff loosened off and off like I said and then I'm gonna soak them in rubbing alcohol to remove the water and then I gotta get like a hot wax to dip them in I mean I'm not looking at them being you know ready to wear but we got to preserve them and that's the most important thing so anyway appreciate you coming along and i'll see you on the next one until then good luck and happy hunting oh i almost forgot predator tools all right quick plug for predator tools i've had this thing for three years uh as you can see it's lost most of its paint uh, i sent it back this is the uh, piranha I sent it back a couple of months ago because the shovel blade had actually it actually cracked right here at the world and uh, they straightened it up a little bit and then they re-weld it but I got a sneaking suspicion that I will be sending this back in if that blade bends back anymore I mean it's a tool yeah but you know what when you're digging you, you know I almost expect it to. I don't know. Somebody might say I'm abusing the tools, but I'm not. I'm using them. And my friends have seen me out there digging, and they know that I dig at a furious rate. Um. Anyway, Predator tools. It's a great tool. This is the Prana, like I said, the Prana I think 36. But I got a feeling I'll be taking, I'll be sending it back in again before the five years is up, or whatever. So. But of course, you know, if there's anybody out there who thinks they got a tool just as good, shoot me a line, let me know. If they want to shoot me a tool, they can let me know. And I'll go out there and I'll put it through its paces, especially when we're digging stuff like this. But, I mean, it's held up, don't get me wrong. Three years it's held up, and this last year has been pretty tough on it. And like I said, they, they took it back, no problems. Rewelded it, but I keep an eye on that weld. I'll clean up when I get home and I'll look and see if that weld's uh, holding together or if it's cracked again. Anyway, but anyway, again, thanks for uh, coming along and uh, I will uh, see you all soon. Until then, uh, good luck and happy hunting.